Shadab Khan, thank you so much for joining me on E-Times. It's really lovely mm -hmm. seeing you. And, my pleasure. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. First of all, first of all, I will tell you about the show that we are talking to the son of the legendary Amjad Khan. I really don't know. I'm really puzzled, you know, that why wasn't this word legendary used or is used even now before your father's name? Well, I don't know. I mean, look, I've always believed that God had been, God has been very kind to my family and extremely kind to my late father. And uh, the people love him a lot. Till date, he's respected. Till date, he's loved. And uh, whether people use that word along with, you know, dad's name or not, does not matter. What really matters is that till date, he's regarded not only among uh, lovers of Indian cinema, but also uh, members of the film fraternity. I mean, the guys who were there from dad's time and even people who came later on they definitely have a lot of respect and a lot of love for him. I don't know about the new generation because you see, new generation, there's so many icons. There's so many legends in their own time. You know, for the younger lot, your WhatsApp and the Twitter generation that, you know, they might not know uh, how much my father achieved during his time. So I can't blame them for that. But people from his time and even a little after his time, they have a lot of love for him. And even the audiences. So whether the word legend is used with him or not, I mean, there are, I'm sure dad would have had no complaints. You know, uh, it's also important to tell the viewers that you were your dad's lucky mascot, if you can. Yeah. That. <laughs> you were born yeah. on the day when he signed, when he signed Ramesh Sipi Shole. Uh, the, and the thing is that um, before he signed Shole, uh, he didn't have the money to basically, you know, get my, have my mom discharged from hospital. So the day he signed Shole, I mean, he didn't, he didn't have the money to get her discharged. So, uh, so she was waiting to get discharged and uh, dad, uh, and, and he didn't show up till evening because he didn't have the money. So he couldn't, he, he was feeling ashamed to show his face at, at uh, the hospital. And my mom was sitting and crying you know, with me, we just born. Dad, at that point in time, there was a filmmaker. I think it was uh, Chetan Anand sir, the late Mr. Chetan Anand. He loaned my father uh, 400 rupees. And uh, he told my dad, keep this money. Don't give it back to me. Uh, he actually, he saw my father sitting, you know, holding his head. And he asked dad, he said, uh, you know, what are you doing here? You know, aren't you supposed to get your, you know, wife and child discharged from hospital today? My dad was doing this film at that time. He had just, I think he was, I think he, it was about to release or it had already released Hindustan Ki Kasam. Yeah. Uh, so dad said, I can't go to the hospital. I don't have the money to get discharged. You know? So he loaned my father. He gave my father 400 rupees. He said, how much do you need? He said, about 400. He said, you keep this money. Don't give it back to me. Just don't act silly. Just go and get your wife and child. Hmm. So yeah, that day, you know, so yeah, I was, you know, I don't know whether you know, whether I'm the lucky mascot or not. But yeah, I was, you know, born the day he signed, surely. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he ran for the shoot because uh, he feared that Danny Denzongpa will be signed for that role. He wanted to be on time. No, no, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, Danny Sahab was originally approached for the role. Yeah. Danny Sahab was the, was the first choice. I think yeah. he was the first choice. Because yes. I think shooting for uh, uh, Mr. Firoz Khan Saab's film in Afghanistan. Hmm. I can't remember the name of the film. Hmm. Uh, he was shooting in Afghanistan. Which one? Dharmatma. I think it was Dharmatma. I'm not sure. Yeah. So he was shooting in, uh, in Afghanistan. Hmm. And he could not uh, he could not give dates uh, for Shole. Hmm. Then the role came to dad. It was, I think it was uh, Salim Saab who recommended my father. Mm. To uh, Salim Khan Saab recommended him to Ramesh. Ki take a look at this actor. I mean, he's a young actor. He's the he's the you know Jain Saab's son. Take a look at him. Then Ramesh he saw Dad in a play, uh, and um, he said, "Okay, I'll call this guy in for for an audition." And they auditioned him, and they liked what he what they saw. Danny Saab was not a part of the film. What happened was uh, the they were supposed to go and film in Bangalore from Mumbai. Uh, from Bombay, they were leaving by, by flight. And there was a lot of turbulence that day. 
and pain i think took off and touched the runway seven times or something like that mm. they tried of seven times and there was so much turbulence that they had to land and it was just it was it was very frightening and only only a handful of people you know and finally the plane stopped they finally landed and then everybody was asked to you know get off and then when the flight was rescheduled three or four people had the guts to get back onto that plane one of them was my father because he was scared that you know if he doesn't do this film they'll approach danny sahab and he'll make himself available so that was the fear that you know he there was the only opportunity he had he said no bolte na marta kya na karta so he said i have to get on the plane because you know whether it crashes whether it reaches you know i can't let go of this opportunity so he he went i remember the first three days the movie hadn't picked up it was released at minerva mm -hmm. and uh, suddenly somebody told us that monday ko aap jaake ticket book karo aapko milegi said what uh, what nonsense is this person talking and we sent someone for the tickets and he came back saying no there are no tickets there are no tickets the bookings are shut there are some thousands of people standing outside minerva cinema i said but the film is not doing well but the film is not running he said no go and see i am not going to go again and buy the tickets there no what had happened was for the first couple of weeks as a matter of fact mm. the film had tanked mm. there was talk about uh, editing this portion or editing that portion out dubbing my father's voice with someone else mm. they said this gabbar singh this guy's voice is bringing the film down stuff like that but fortunately ramesh ji completely stuck to his guns and he was and he was seconded by bachan sir that you know this is your vision as director don't think over it these two people played a huge part in ensuring that my father's work as gabbar remained untouched and the film was not you know tampered with in any way in fact there's a very interesting incident that does not concern my father my father concerns him but it was not narrated to me by my dad mm -hmm. narrated to me by the late mr tom alter uh, with regards to shole and believe me i mean it sounds surreal but this actually happened now when shole had just released mm. the first couple of days first couple of weeks as a matter of fact was considered a flop mm. it's considered a dud tom sahab was a young was a young actor mm. he was from uh, he, he came to mumbai and, and and he 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 was himself looking to find his feet in the business yeah he visited visited a restaurant in bandra uh he told me the restaurant was moti mel mm. he visited on bandra and uh, he sat at the table and uh, the a waiter came and you know tended to him and tom sahab of course you know he's lived all his life in india uh he he speaks fluent hindi he speaks excellent he used to speak excellent urdu may god bless his soul he started talking to the waiter in hindi so the waiter was very impressed he are gora hindi bol raha hai so bahut impressed ho gaye waiter unke sath Mm. So he started conversing, conversing with the uh, Tom Zab, and he told Tom Zab, "Bato, bato." He said, "Ek nayi picture aayi hai, sir. Aapne dekhi hai?" Mm. Tom Zab ne mujhe kaun? Bola Shole naam ki film. So Tom Zab bola, "Acha, kaisi aapne dekhi?" Bola, "Haan, sir, dekhi hai. Maine, lekin aap mat dekho." He says, "Kyu kya ho?" Waiter ne bola, "Yar, kya picture? Kya picture banayi hai, sir?" He said, "Dabba picture banayi." He said, "Sanjeev Kumar ke to haathi nahi hai picture mein. Wo picture mein haathi nahi Sanjeev Kumar ki." और धर्मिंदर और उनको दिखाया हुआ है अमिताभ बच्चन साहब को कि मतलब वो सिक्के के ऊपर हर चीज कॉइन सिक्के के ऊपर करते हैं और जय बहादुरी को विधवा दिखाया है वो लालटेन लेके खड़ी है घूमधर घूम रही है बच्चन साहब उनको वहां से देख रहे हैं जय बहादुरी वहां से रोमांस ही नहीं दिखाया और ये क्या विलन लिया है अमजद खान को नहीं ये क्या डायलॉग है कितने आदमी थे कितने आदमी थे क्या डायलॉग है डब्बा पिक्चर है कभी मत दे रैन दूटली रिपोर्ट then about 3 or 4 months later tom saab once again went to he was in bandra he dropped by at moti mel once again for lunch wow the same same waiter attended to now oh, itne logon ko dekhta he probably didn't remember this man so tom saab remembered so he was serving him and once again the waiter said sir aapko picture dekhi hai aapne shole tom saab bola nahi maine nahi dekhi dekhi kya aapne waiter said 
क्या फिल्म बनाई है सब संजीव कुमार के हाथ नहीं है सेम लाइन वेरी सेट डिफरेंट हाथ नहीं है पूरी पिक्चर में संजीव कुमार के हाथ नहीं है और जया बहादुरी और बच्चन साहब के बीच क्या रोमांस दिखाया है विधवा है वो लाल टेन लेके घूमती है क्या दिखाया है और क्या विलन पकड़ा है सर अमजद खान सर क्या विलन क्या डायलॉग है कितने आदमी थे क्या डायलॉग है सर पिक्चर जरूर जाके देखो एवरी थिंग टर्न वन एटी इन मैटर ऑफ ह्यूमन दिस इज दिस एक्चुअली एक्सप्लेन यू नो दिस एक्चुअली जस्ट सम्स अप द सक्सेस ऑफ शोर you know this is the problem with our audience uh, i remember when khamoshi was released sanjay leela banwari's khamoshi and it was a marvelous uh, people came out from the theater and said kyun kya nana patekar who continuously talks i mean doesn't mm-hmm. talk is not talking in the film he's dumb i know this is the problem with our audience but that's the thing now that that was the for me i mean i've seen the film and i loved it for me it was the that was the beauty of the casting i mean you take somebody who is known to do something and then you make him do something else yeah when I mean, see it's it's not just audience this it's people you know as a rule they are not open to change you ha- it takes a little time for them to you know to come around to your way of thinking if you're thinking you know if, if today khamoshi is considered one of the you know it's a, it's it's considered a path breaking film mm. it takes time that's mm-hmm. what i personally feel it takes i personally thought the film was wonderful and today if you talk to anybody about a film like khamoshi they'll all unanimously say that it was one of the it was one of the path breaking films of its time undoubtedly tell me your dialogue number 1 from shore uh For me, it is ये ये रामगढ़ वाले कौन सा चक्की की कौन सा चक्की का आटा खिलाते अपनी बेटियों को For me, that's the line. I like. I don't know why, but I I sort of like that line. I don't know why. I don't know. I love that line. कितने आदमी थे Everybody likes it, but hmm. I like this line. And of course, जो डर गया समझो मर गया. Probably the latter more than the former. Yeah, and I said, did this role get? into your dad so much that he started behaving like that at home because it often happens that uh, with actors when they do a very intense or a very famous role then their body language becomes just that see i was very young hmm extremely young when that happened so yeah. i don't uh, i don't recall i don't recall how he was during jole but uh, my but never mom never happened. speak but mom has never said anything about him becoming a different person mm. i mean uh, sure he he worked very hard on getting the character right but uh, i don't think there was any change in him as such there was no change in uh, his personality he is he was never the sort of person who gets his work home i mean whatever even when i saw him grow up when I, while growing up i saw him i don't ever remember him getting his work home I mean, he always uh, he was very good at compartmentalizing work was work and you know home time family time was family time those two never uh, cross paths you know and then when i saw him in his second film in his third film he had put on so much of weight obviously after that accident which happened uh, on the sets of the great gambler mm-hmm. that uh, almost took his life that was that yeah. was a terrible thing to- and unfortunately that more or less uh, how can i how, how do i put it more or less more or less sort of sealed his fate i mean that that cut his life short by at least 25 30 years he died what 48 he, and everything started the beginning of the end was that accident and he, there was nothing he could do about it. i mean the weight gain he just couldn't help he just couldn't help it he could not he was he was a sportsman a very very good sportsman in his younger days he couldn't do anything after that his his weight just kept ballooning and there was nothing he could do it was not because of overeating or anything he was a poor eater as a matter yeah, of fact yeah yeah but, but the problem is that you know 
that really, really took a huge toll on his health. And there was nothing the man could do about it. I know. I also know that uh, you were very, very upset. Of course, you will be. When he passed away and you threw glass, you cut glass. Uh, I'm sorry, but can you take us through that moment? Huh? What exactly happened and uh, when did you overcome it eventually? See, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, I wasn't home uh, for the whole day. I was out. I came home at around 8. It was a Sunday, the 27th of July. Next day, I met dad before I left. I met him in the morning. I met him in the afternoon. He was, you know, getting up and going to bed. Uh, and then when I came home, mom asked me, she said, go wake, you know, dad up, you know, it's eight in the evening, you know, he's, he's still not gotten up. I was there, my aunt was there, my mom's younger sister. Tried to wake him up, he didn't get up. He was cold. Like ice. Uh, then they tried to resuscitate him, but, you know, nothing. There was a doctor nearby who practiced just down the road. We called him over. And uh, He checked him over, he checked him up, he, he checked him and he said that, you know, that uh, he's, you know, he's probably had a heart attack and uh, he called for the ambulance and they asked me to get a particular injection. I still remember it was a water-soluble adrenaline injection. Now, I was 18 at that time. I didn't have a driver's license. I was a learner. But I wasn't about to entrust my father's life in the hands of the driver. I said, I'll drive. I drove. I must have driven like a maniac. I went to two different uh, uh, chemists nearby. I couldn't find it there. Finally, I went to this Asha Parekh hospital. Mm. Uh, find this... Uh, Nobody chemist. Yeah. Uh, I think it's behind Santa Cruz police station. Yeah. Uh, next to that. I went there. I got it there. I came home. I, I must have been gone. I mean, all of that. It was post eight. But I drove like a madman. I'm, I'm surprised I didn't bang. Or I, I didn't crash my car into something. I must have driven like a maniac. I came home. And uh, I was gone a few minutes. I came home and I gave the injection to doctor. And I remember him telling me, um, I don't need it anymore. We don't need it anymore. So I said, is he going to be okay? He says, no. You literally, he told me, you're, you're literally, he said, I'm so sorry, but you're a few seconds late. Literally a few seconds late. My first reaction, I think I hit the, I don't remember very clearly the sequence of events, but I definitely, I remember hitting the doctor. I slugged a, f a friend of mine, because by then, few people had come, family friends had come by then. Um, I slugged one of my father's closest friends. Then I think I smashed glass. I don't remember. I smashed a lot of glass. I smashed a lot of crockery. After that, I remember banging my hand, my fist into the wall. I remember that. I broke my hand. I think I, I think I, I don't remember. I cracked it. I'm certainly sure. I didn't, I didn't plaster it, but it took like a crazy amount of time to heal after that. So yeah, I, I remember these. I just don't, you know, it's, it's very foggy. The entire sequence of events. And I just remember it in scattered bits. I do remember hitting the doctor. And I remember breaking a lot of glass. And then banging my fist into the wall. I remember that. Your uh, younger brother was also very... He was 10. And uh, I... he didn't... The thing is, uh, he didn't show it as much as... Uh, you know, uh, some people demonstrated, some people, some people, he was very young. It took him a while to process it. It was about uh, a, a month or so later that he got an asthma attack. So it was four weeks later that he felt it. He was, just, that, 10, that, he was just 10 then. 
he was 10 uh, he was 10 i was 18 my sister was 14 so yeah it just happened very suddenly if i'm not and, uh, he told your mom that uh, why are you wearing white and dad likes red he said that uh, why are you wearing white dad likes red he also he also uh, he, see dad passed passed to me in july his birthday is on the 3rd of september my brothers he it was just 40 days since dad passed away he wanted a party because he was feeling so lost and insecure and he just wanted a party he said i i want to celebrate my birthday i just want to celebrate my birthday it was only for that and he got his asthma attack during that time as well so yeah i mean it was a crazy time I mean, that was not the only thing that happened it was there was a lot more that happened financially how was the time post your father's death okay honestly i've never spoken about it at least i don't remember but yeah i think it's high time uh my father had a, a habit of being a very good man a very good man a straight arrow somebody who helped a lot of people and he was the first to let go of a lot of money for people i have seen producers come home and give him sob stories that they are giving him the keys to his house or keys to their house because they can't afford to pay the remaining money and him actually waving off the fees you know and, and i remember without any, without any keys coming of course yeah nothing 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 no keys no car nothing nothing at all and uh, it wasn't that he couldn't see through it he could see right through it he was not he was not a fool he was a very intelligent man but he 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 didn't care and he didn't care about the money it was it was not about the money for him now when he died uh dad never kept much money in banks he would always keep and it was not some it was not black money when he was he just felt it more convenient to keep money lying around with friends ki yeah, i mai maasi le lunga maasi le that was his nature and before he died uh, there were producers who owed him money without exaggeration this is true money to the tune of a crore and 25 lakh and i'm talking about in 1992 a crore and 25 lakh we didn't see a rupee of that money not a penny after he died not nobody a penny forward and nobody came forward and said this is your money itna paisa no see back ko dena hai na koi nahi hai koi nahi hai a crore and 25 lakh uh, we had lab letters you know back then you got lab letters you yeah. know, against you know you finish your dubbing whatever it was it yeah yeah we had we had lab letters worth that much but koi nahi aaya samne nobody came forward and uh, only a handful of people who had kept who he had given the money to they returned it only a handful of people i don't know how much money kha gaye log mujhe pata nahi i don't remember i don't know frankly in fact this is true and again i don't know whether i should be saying it but i'll say it about a month or so after my father's passing about i think no more than a month mm. there was a call from out of the country from out of india mm. from the middle east mm. and a very and a very famous gangster came on the line a very famous don he asked to speak to my mother so my mother came on the line this was i think 3 months later i think 3 or 3 3 3 and a half months later 4 months later he came on the, he spoke to my mother and he said that i have heard from unconfirmed sources that the industry owes your husband your late husband a crore and 25 lakh hmm i said yes they do he said look your husband was a good man he was one of the few people who was straight mm. he says is it all right he says give me 3 days 3 mm. days every single penny that is owed to you 
it will reach your doorstep. Three days. My mother flatly refused. She said, look, during my husband's lifetime, he never took favors from the underworld. Never. Mm. He never took favors. Now that he's dead, I will not break that rule. Paisa jata hai, But I cannot take favors from the underworld. We never saw a penny of that money. A crore 25 lakh in 1992, gone. So yeah, and in the bank, my dad, like I said, dad never trusted banks. I mean, not trusted banks, but he never kept money in banks that much. Mm -hmm. There was a thousand rupees in the bank. He didn't care about money. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was tough. But hats off to my mom. She single-handedly, she had never even seen the inside of her bank. She didn't even know how to write a check. I was 18, sister was 14, brother was 10. Single-handedly, it was mom who pulled everything out of, you know, pulled, you know, you know, pulled things out of the fire and got everything back on track. She started working? No, she basically, uh, she made a smart deal, basically struck the deal for our home. We turned that into a building, stuff like that. Got into construction. It was all her. Otherwise, uh, if, if she hadn't been strong at that point in time, you know, basically, yeah, we, we would have been on the street if that had not, uh, if it wasn't for mom. I was just seeing a song of mm -hmm. on YouTube. I have this habit of going to YouTube and seeing songs of 70s and 80s. So mm -hmm. I saw a song where uh, Amjad is, uh, you know, singing with his gang, Uchi Uchi Baaton Se, Kisi Ka Pet Bharta Nahi, Hame Jo Salam Kare Kabhi Bhukha Marta Nahi. And I remember that movie because I had seen it at least twice. I grew up on Amitabh Bachchan's films and mm -hmm. uh, was a big fan. Or I am a big fan of his, of course, even now. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so Usme Panch Minute Kebad Bogana Ate where Amita Bachan and Rekha Singh in return uh, because they counter him uh, to defeat mm. him, as, uh, mm. which he does against them and say that Uchi Uchi Bato Se Kisika Bed Vartani, Ram Kabharosa Jise Kabi Bukha Martani. So I, you know, got this. Mm. And I think you can explain this better. ये सब खत्म क्यों हो गया है there is no triumph of good over evil. There is no, uh, you know, background music bhi ek hota hai. Choti choti mein. See, I personally feel, aap, agar aap South Cinema dekho, hmm. if you see South Cinema, it's still prevalent. Look, there is no dearth of talent in Bollywood. Hmm. Yaan dearth of talent nahi. And there is no dearth of good, and there are no dearth of good filmmakers and good storytellers also. I personally feel it's just an opinion that up Hollywood co yar on certain matters don't follow the Hollywood culture. I firmly feel up itna bhi realism mein mat jao. Don't get so realistic also that you're mm -hmm. telling stories that are, you know that are very easy to believe. But you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Yeah. To make a story, to make a story more believable and more realistic, don't dilute the villain. Okay? In the truth, you will not get such a villain in the truth. In the truth, you will not get Mogambo. In the truth, you will not get Gabbar. You will not get Dr. Dang. Okay, I believe that in the truth, you will not get such people in the truth. But if I want to see the realism, I will see a documentary. Hmm. When I want to see larger than life, I'll watch movies. South cinema still hasn't let go of that larger than life image for their heroes and for their villains. Because fine, I'm sure even they're influenced by Hollywood. But in certain matters, they to make it more realistic. Hmm. They're larger than life. 
Shada, tell me, what are you up to these days? You did a fantastic TV series, Scam, made by Ansel Mehta. Thank you. And uh, Ansel, sir, yes. We still see very less of you. Kya ho raha hai? Matlab, why? You did Hey Ram, Kamal Hassan, you did Refugee, Abhishek Bachchan out there. What you think did not click for you? Honestly speaking, the timing. I'll tell you again, it again goes back to my father's death. Okay, bear with me here. After my father died, uh, when I was 18, I wanted to at any cost come into this business. I was very clear about that. I want to come into this business. Because I just wanted to make him proud. I was not thinking about films. I really wasn't thinking about films. I was very keen on joining the police force. Yeah, I wanted to do my my masters. Mm. You know, I wanted to do my MA, and then you know, join the police force. That was my original idea. Mm. But after my father passed away, I just mm. couldn't do that. I mean, I I felt that I needed to, I needed to pay him some sort of tribute. You know, there's an incident. My father and I were listening to a song one day. Dad was, you know, uh, there is a song, uh, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. Hmm? It was going by, it was, it was playing in the background, we were in the room. And uh, he asked me, he says, So tell me, will you? I said, Will I what? He said, Will you let the sun go down on me? I said, what do you mean? He said, nothing. He said, just don't let the sun go down on me. So, you know, these things come to your mind. Mm. There was also another incident. Uh, again, I was about 17. And out of the blue, my father asked me one day, he said, uh, tell me, what do you want to do when you grow up, when you get out of college? I said, uh, well, I'm thinking of acting. He said, hmm. I said, why, why was that reaction? I said, hmm. I said, do you think I'm not good enough? You think I can't act? He says, no, it's not that. He said, uh, he gave me an incident of, of one of his earlier films. He said, I was part of a film where I was called for two weeks straight. I was playing a henchman. This was before Shole happened for me. I was playing a henchman and uh, I was made to sit on the continuity boxes, the continuity dabbas for two weeks mm. with makeup and everything. I wasn't called to the set even once. And after two weeks, I was sacked because they felt that you could cut one of the smaller actors out, save some money. He said, I didn't say anything. I left. Then a couple of weeks later, I got called for Shole. He says, what would you have done? He asked me. Because when I was younger, I had a temper on me. I was very young. I had a hot head. He said, what would you have done? I said, you, first day, okay. Second day, okay. Third day by lunch. A little after lunch, you would have gone up. You know, you, you would have walked onto the set, created a scene, left the film. He says, that's your nature. Whether you come from a rich family or whether you don't right now, this is how your mind is. He says, my only fear is I've worked very hard in this business. I've, I've built goodwill. So I'm only scared with this temperament, you'll destroy it. He told me that. He says, you'll destroy my goodwill. Because you, you, you will not be able to control your impulse. You will you, definitely, you will find people who rub you the wrong way in this business. But you're too hot-tempered for this business. You, you're not meant, temperamentally, you're not right. I took offense to that. I didn't say anything. I said, how can you say that about me? When my father died, I wanted to get into this business to prove him wrong. That no, I can make you proud. I can make you proud. I can fit here. I can make you proud. I came here, but at the same time, 
what had happened after his death the money that was not repaid like i told you a crore and 25 lakh the financial problems we had until by the grace of god my mother made all the right moves all of that had left a very bad taste in my mouth vicky very bad taste i came into this business but very half heartedly raja ki aagi barat betabi kamal ji's heram yeah that was a film that i loved again i enjoyed working thoroughly in that film but a couple of films i just took because i just wanted to be here i wasn't planning my career i just wanted to be here i just wanted to prove that you know i can make you proud that i can't mess things up that you know i i can get things right and i'm not that silly 17 year old but at the same time there was a lot of anger in me a lot of anger in me. you know i could not get over the fact that so much was stolen so i left the business chhod diya maine 17 years i left the business i didn't want to come back because i for 17 years i could not let go of this fact then things changed people came people went that entire old lot has been replaced new a lot the industry is corporatized finally after all these years i am back scam happened very happy okay. there were no illusions i was always told that it's a secondary character i was always told six to seven scenes hansal sir is very transparent great guy to work with wonderful working with him it was a pleasure when the show released we were all over the moon the show did really well there were no illusions for me i always knew it was a secondary character i knew that but it was wonderful working there a thing after scam was that because the show did so well my character vijay kedia people it was a bit of a late reaction initially nobody spoke about me it was about a couple of weeks later that they also became aware of the smaller characters then they started talking about my character they said okay this guy has also done a good job the problem there was i started getting a lot of work along the same lines it was the same character you know okay there's this rich snooty businessman wearing a suit and acting all rich and snooty yaar i don't want to play that character every time you see ek bar ho gaya ho gaya agar main wohi karta rahunga i'll get type cast so post cam there were as many as 15 projects that had the same tone the same character secondary role छह से आठ दिन का काम बिजनेसमैन रिच स्नूटी ब्रैटी ऐसे ना मेरे को नहीं करने का आई ऑल्सो ऑडिशन वॉट स्कैम डिड गुड फॉर मी वॉज दैट इट गॉट मी इन टू द सर्कल ऑफ कॉन्स्टेंटली गेटिंग ऑडिशन या आई हैव ऑडिशन फॉर सम गुड प्रोजेक्ट्स अनफॉर्चुनेटली द प्रोजेक्ट्स दर आई वॉन्टेड हैव नॉट कम टू मी एज येट नॉट बिकॉज नॉट बिकॉज आई डिड आई डिड नॉट लिव अप टू my end of the bargain in the audition it's only because i was most saleable actors were considered so that again is not something that i worry about because again if somebody is most saleable they will be considered over you it's okay that's not an issue so post cam i'm auditioning very regularly now i've got maybe yeah there are about four or five projects that are up in the air if god wills i will bag at least two of them but i have not taken on any work post cam because a lot of work that was coming to me was basically ajay kedia in in different projects see it's not about the money for me you know by by the grace of god be okay that way it's about doing good work for me i have come back into this business after 17 years of being out 2000 i left 2017 2018 sorry 18 years later 2018 i came back with a small role in a film called raw mm. now after that i bagged scam for me it's not about just you know just grabbing whatever comes my way i could have done that when i was maybe 20 or 21 but at that time i wasn't thinking i wasn't thinking clear i was only thinking about i was conflicted very conflicted in my in my head became very conflicted on one hand i wanted to like i said make my father very proud that i can 
I am not, you know, I'm not temperamentally off. I can make it in this business. That you were wrong about me there. I can make you proud. And on the other hand, I was angry. That, yaar, I don't want to work here where so much money has already been stolen from my family. That you have stolen money from us. You have not, you know, you just left us on the road, literally. So there was that great conflict in me, which kept me out for 17 years. Now, I've come back much older, much more mature. And I'm mellowed 48. Mellowed down, I've become intelligent. Intelligent in the sense that I have become, what do you call it? Very focused. Very mellow, very focused. For me, it's not about doing a lot of work blindly. For me, it's about quality. I just want to do good work. I have three goals, to be very honest with you. You might laugh if I tell you, but I have three goals. Goal number one, there are two filmmakers I want to work with. One is Mr. Bhansali and the other is Mr. Rajkumar Hirani. Mm-hmm. These are the two filmmakers I want to work with. One has, the former has great sense of vision, great sense of, uh, great sense of canvas. And the second tells very complicated stories in a beautiful, simplified manner. These two are my favorite filmmakers. These two I want to work with. That's my first goal. Yeah. Second is I want to win. I want to win a national award. That is my second goal. And the third goal, I want to be the first actor from Bollywood to win an Oscar. I don't know if even one will ever be accomplished, but the uh, day all three are accomplished, Vicky, I retire. Shadab, tell me, uh, has mom started seeing dad's films again? Because I know she had stopped seeing. The pictures were not there at home. Uh, she wanted to have it that way. Very reluctantly. Uh, more his photographs. Mm. She sees his photographs a lot. Uh, not his pictures all that much. She sees a lot of old photographs. She's more into the photographs. She's not that much into movies. And she doesn't watch too many movies, as a matter of fact. She watches a lot of um, that serial. Uh, that Etrugul Ghazi, that Turkish serial. She Pele watches a photo, lot of that. She had completely stopped reading, seeing photographs. She nothing to do. She didn't want to be reminded. Yeah, But now, yeah, last yeah. The last few years, yeah, she's been seeing. Uh, she, it's not that she doesn't see films; she does, but uh, she sees more of the pictures and less of uh, less of the movies. And she sees a lot of television. That's that's what she likes to watch. Take us through the bond which your father had with uh, Amitabh Bachchan. See. Dad and Bachchan Saab were the closest friends. I mean, and, and it was actually Bachchan Saab, as I said earlier, mm. who was instrumental in ensuring that my father's work in Shole remained intact, and his scenes were not chopped, and his voice wasn't dubbed. Yeah. In fact, I remember in 2015, I had written a novel. It was about a mystery for Penguin. And uh, I wanted Bachchan Saab to launch the book for me. Mm. Now I didn't have a number, nothing. I, I had not stayed in touch with him for years. I got the number from somewhere. Right here, lands and again. I was entering the hotel. Okay, just driving in. I messaged him. I said, "Sir, I'm so and so. I've written a book. I'd love. I'd be very honored if you'd launch it." I entered the hotel. I didn't think I'd get a response, honestly. I entered the coffee shop. I sat. My wife and I, we were together. I sat on the table. He replied so within five minutes that yes, I'll come. Send me the address. That, both in that old world manners, Tamiz jise bolte. Very few people have that. Bachchan Sahab is right at the top of that list. Very, very few people have that. That that manners is uh, he's, he's he is a legend, and, and, and you know there is there is absolutely no denying that. Shara, this has been a lovely conversation, and thank you so much for this. 
I wish you all the best uh, in your life. Uh, you. And uh, thank you. Let, let me underline: the sun will never come down on your father, Amjad Khan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.